Hello and welcome to this video, which is the beginning of a new project. So this project is going to be a 14th century medieval gown and I'm very excited about it because I've never done any medieval sewing before or even attempted any even vaguely historical fashion projects. But this is going to be an enthusiastic first attempt and although it won't be 100% historically accurate, I'm hoping that it will turn out okay in the end. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the designing process for the dress that I'll be making and now that I've introduced the project, I think the next thing to do is to introduce the Middle Ages. So, Middle Ages started in the 5th century, they end in the 15th century. This means that the dress I'm making today is from the later part of the era, and this was a very cool time. So with developments like the loom and the spinning wheel, there was a lot more scope for experimentation with things like colour, fit, tailoring, and also weirdly buttons was something that, was being, that were being used a lot more, so that's quite interesting. Um, and back to the drawing, I am continuing with the pencil sketch and then after that I will be painting it. So at this point you might be wondering, what were people wearing in the 14th century? Well, first of all there was underwear, so a lot of people would wear hose, which is basically stockings. They were often a red colour um, and this was produced from the madder root, which is a kind of plant dye. And the stockings would be tied below the knee to stop them from falling down. Then another kind of undergarment that a lot of people would wear was a chemise, which is basically like a linen dress. And over this you'd wear an outer dress such as a kirtle or a coat hardy. So this is like a long dress with long sleeves and you can see they've got little side slits so you could reach through to lower layers to get like a pocket or a bag for example. So that's quite handy. Okay, so the next kind of outer dress you have is called a bleout, and my horrific pronunciation aside, this is a dress with a fitted bodice, a full skirt, and really wide sleeves. And sometimes these sleeves were even like floor length, which is extremely over the top, but I love it, so. <laughs> a quick note about the skirts on these medieval dresses. They would often use triangular panels because this shape allows the fabric to not be really bulky at the waistline, but to like flare out into a really nice full skirt. And for a quick update on the sketching, I am nearly done, so soon it will be time to paint it. And two final outer garments that I'm going to talk about are the hoopland and the mantle, which is basically a cloak. So this kind of garment were often trimmed or lined with fur, and depending on how rich you are, you might be able to afford vair, which is squirrel fur, or even something really soft like ermine fur. This is a hoopland, so you can see it has a very high collar and a very high waistline. And this is a mantle, which could use luxury fabrics like silk, damask, velvet or brocade. And if you were very rich, you could even have fabric embroidered with silver or gold. So now that we've covered a bit of history, I am just going ahead and painting the sketch. And another thing that I wanted to look at for some inspiration, um, as well as history, is some art. So I've picked out a couple of paintings about the medieval times. Um, to have a look at. So the first of these is The Lady of Shalott, which is a painting based on the poem by Lord Alfred Tennyson, but the painting itself was done during the movement of the Pre-Raphaelites. So this was an artistic movement which um, portrayed beauty quite unconventionally compared to the quite rigid standards of beauty in the Victorian era. So some of the features of this could include romanticised medieval imagery, a lot of flowing fabrics, um, loose hair, things being a lot freer and more liberating than before. So the actual story of the poem is about a young woman who's imprisoned in a tower up the river from Camelot, and this is a very small extract from the poem. So the next painting we have is Ophelia, so this is based on Ophelia from Hamlet and this is the bit of the play where she is drowning in a lake but somehow looking very beautiful so that's sad and I'm still not sure why no one saved her if they could see her drowning but anyway here is the quote. And the final painting is from the poem La Belle Dame Sans Merci by John Keats so this is the art. So this poem is basically about a knight who is in the woods where he meets this mysterious elfin woman and is like enchanted by her but she basically ditches him so at the end of the poem he is feeling very disillusioned and alone but that's too bad. Um, 
And so now that we've done all that research, it is time to pull it all together. So I am just finishing off the painting bit and soon the painting will be done because luckily for you, I have fast forward. Um, so look, wow, I'm almost finished and I'm just adding the final bit, which is a circlet because those were popular in the medieval era. And on the topic of headwear, um, hairstyles um, generally were very elaborate in the Middle Ages. So the crespinet was a kind of hairnet, which quite a lot of people wore. And another type of headdress is the barbet, which sort of ties under your chin. And also things like braids with twisted ribbons in them were quite popular at the time. And on a side note, if you're wondering, yeah, that is that is a biro <laughs> that I'm using, so sorry about that. But now we have finally finished the drawing, and here it is. And you thought that that was it, but no, I actually have to do technical drawings now, which are basically where the seam lines are so that I know how to plant the pattern pieces. So this is a bit of a nightmare, but here you go, this is what it looked like after I was done. And that is it! So part one of the project is complete, and next time I will be finding some fabric. I may or may not be also dyeing the fabric, but who knows. But either way, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye!